Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Once again, we have two guests on the channel today. We have Brother George and Ed. That is because today we are at Lama Show. So plan is we're gonna have a look around, see what we can see, and I hope you'll enjoy. So we have made our way into Lama now. We are all coffeeed up and caffeined up for the day. So what are you two are looking forward to seeing today? Tractors mainly. New equipment, tractors, combines. I'd like to see a few parts of life. Yeah, it would be quite interesting to go and find like the likes of cramp and stuff like that. I'm just here for a laugh. I'm not really that interested in machinery. I do tell a lie, I am actually interested in machinery. That's why would they be here, but George. These are quite cool because trail fert spreaders, George actually was interested well, in trying lime spreaders. and lime spreaders because we were actually looking at possibly spreading some urea, weren't we, in the spring. Hello. Just need to figure out where I'm actually talking. There it is, the health and well-being zone. That's equivalent to what the class one we've got, isn't it? That's 10. One, two, three, four, five. Six. I think more it's solid, more solid design. There's a lot more metal in them, but they're a lot heavier. I don't know if that would go on the back of our smaller tractors, because no, it's a lot of metal. Heavy. Whereas the class is a bit more plastic in them, which helps with smaller tractors. Yeah. It's the one thing with chrome kit, it's a lot of metal in it, isn't it? They're well built, but they're heavy on yeah. this kit. The problem is compaction nowadays. Yeah, you're right, yeah. especially with, with, with the grass. You try and get the most out of the crop, you don't want to be running over ground again and again with big heavy kit. So you like these mergers, don't you, on the back of the mowers? Yeah, the best thing is you're doing your braking and your mowing in one pass. So you're reducing your compaction on the field. Yeah. And then you've only then got the chopper going over the top. And then your trailer. Tra 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 That's a good German kit here. Definitely better than the French, isn't it? You don't like French people, do you? Don't buy French anyway. <laughs> this is where all my French, my French viewership drops instantly. You told them not to eat French, and now you say not buy French kit. Yeah, I'm They're not going to get many adverts on my channel, are they? Man or two aren't going to be ringing up for sponsoring. Well, you know, you don't really want to be sponsored. Uh, I'd rather have a JCB. No, much rather have British JCB stuff. Do you think that tether's bigger? You know where I like tethers? Trail. Yeah. This is a trail tether. Ah. So what's this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is that 12? That's 12. That's like the one we had on demo, isn't it? I'm just going to count again just because I know you're five. One, two, three. So yeah, 12. You can count. So before we actually went to all the class kit, we had basically all potting to do it with the rakes and tents and everything. Yeah. We really, it's fair, they're really good stuff, but because the amount of work we're doing with them, they tended to break. They're okay. They're okay. There wasn't enough metal in them, was there? There's some decent kit here, isn't there? There's a bit. Just a bit of kit. It's fair. Well, to be fair, look at that slurry side tank over there. That is huge. Biggest sorry tank I've ever seen. What will that hold? 30 ton? No, it's. To be no. fair, it's. That's more like it's 100 ton. It's an That's more like 100 ton. Let's see. What are you guessing? About 100 ton. I'm going 45. I'm going 120. Around here, it won't fit in the field quick without, would it? Yet? So, what is it? 19 meter wide, is that what I said? Working with. But 18.75. To be fair, it depends on what you're doing on the back. If you, it all depends on the kit you've got, the tail of it. It holds 30 ton. Uh, where is it? I've just found the perfect machine, the perfect what, the vehicle for checking the sheep. Imagine rocking up to check the sheep in that. So obviously we are here to see plenty of kit today, but also really excited because later today we're actually speaking in one of the speaker zones for the Addington Fund and FCM, which are really cool farming charity so George is just over here looking at some parts and machinery but really really exciting stuff so that is at half two we're just about ten in the morning here well I found the per perfect tool for Sophie it's called a mechanical nut splitter it'd be perfect for you wouldn't it but Sophie needs something to keep you alive for some reason George we've just bypassed the Manitou stand is there any reason it that's a long and French story don't buy French anyway 
it's just a joke. Any French people, we're just joking. And that is why we're gonna actually go over to the Man to stand. You gotta pretend you like French people. Well, it's the new Man that they've brought out. It's fair, it's a nice machine. This can lift about 700 kilos more. This is five tonnes yeah. in this machine. It's very, very different to our, yeah, it is high up. That's one thing I like about our old JCB, you're a lot lower. It's French guys, I don't know how to do it like. You lie on your side. It's a big bucket, isn't it? That's what she said as well. Best get your credit cards out, lads. I don't think mine has this limit on it. Yeah, we're, definitely have this limit. we're at the green tractors. Now this is more like the fence that we'd have. 110, so that's it. That's the equivalent to six four thirty. See, I do a small YouTube channel. I show what I do on the farm. I try and educate people about how I do stuff with the sheep at home, as well as the hay and haylage enterprise. It's fairly simple, but I'm just trying to show people exactly what we get up to on the farm. People that aren't from a farming background or want to learn more about farming. But more recently I've gone into sheep myself. They're a cheap way to get into agriculture, so basically like 120 pounds a year. I bought five sheep and built that up to now we have 250 years. Hello and welcome everyone. Thanks very much for being with us here today. Hello, good afternoon everybody. And uh, thank you very much for uh, asking me to come and take part in this. And I started the charity Forage Aid in 2013 when a huge amount of snow fell in Wales and Cumbria. So I grew up on a family farm. We produce hay and haylage for the equine world and over the past few years I've developed sheep flock on the farm and gone along with it, created a YouTube channel trying to educate people a bit about what we get up to at home and try and encourage people into agriculture. Hey, so I'm Anna, a free range pig farmer from East Yorkshire. Um, uh, yeah, we have a brand called Anna Tabby Trotters. Um, we, 14 years ago, we decided to get away from the mainstream supply chain and just go a bit more direct to give the class a bit more in control. We see this sometimes in the media, we see this sometimes on social media. It's that farmers don't care about the, the welfare of their animals. First of all, that statement is completely wrong. I'm an arable farmer, and until 2013, all I knew about livestock was that I ate it and that it was extremely healthy. But then when I started Forage Aid, I got to know a lot more about livestock. And that statement, farmers don't care for their livestock, is completely an utter rubbish. We are told that by some town people, we're told that by vegans, and we're even told it by government ministers as well. But it's wrong. Farming, farmers really care for the livestock, and I know from some of the interactions I've had uh, with livestock farmers and sheep farmers in the instance we've helped that they will often care for the livestock more than the family. And the families will suffer and the families will go low on food and they'll go on luxuries and they'll spend the money on the livestock to make sure their livestock are healthy and surviving. Personally, having grown up with livestock on the farm and developed my own sheep enterprise, that enterprise comes before anything else. You wake up first thing in the morning, you're going to check your stock before you have your breakfast yourself. And especially at lambing time, you are there 24 seven for caring for those animals. You make sure they have 100% care throughout the day. And personally, I get quite passionate about this because of how much I personally care. I know every other single farmer in Britain is exactly the same. And that's why I do the channel on the YouTube too just to show people how much we do care about our livestock and it's a complete myth of people saying that they don't care. Yeah, I think education is absolutely king, um, but just taking a step back from there, I think it can be very easy for us as, as farmers to just get on the defensive straight away and, you know, it's, it's important not to tell them just to quite frankly off. Um, and, and yeah, get them on farm, um, hit them with facts, because that, that I do quite often just sit back and question myself, are, are we doing the right thing? Is, what would, you know, is it right eating meat? What, what we're doing? But then when you look at sort of the myths and where they're getting their information from, it will be from a farm in some other country and, you know, they're spreading stuff that, you know, none of this stuff happens here. So we've just finished a really, really exciting debate, which Annie, did you pretty much organise or between you and some of us? Yeah, between myself and uh, well, Addington Fund and FCN, we yeah. organised it together. I mean, I did most of the organisation <laughs> and Alex has done most of the comms, so it's a good balance really, but yeah, we've just but done it. 
I actually wanted to grab you because I wanted to talk a little bit about the Addington Fund and what you guys are doing really and what great stuff you're doing too. I thought it'd be really cool to ah. tell everyone. Yeah, thank you. So we're one of the main farming help charities. We work closely alongside FCN and Forage yeah. Aid. Um, but we kind of mainly focus on um, housing issues within the farming industry. Um, we provide affordable housing and retirement homes. Uh, we also provide disaster relief in times of natural disaster or certain disease outbreaks. Um, we've got farm worker grants available and also we've just started a young entrance scheme as well so no that's amazing possibly we're going to do a bit more with you guys in the future yeah that'd be good and just to add on guys i'm going to put a link in the description so if you do just have a penny a pound a fiver just yeah. go onto our website give a little donation because it's all going to a great thing yeah, and yeah definitely. thank you for having me today it's been absolutely amazing thank you for joining us it's been no great worries. cheers thank, thank you, you. Bye -bye. so that is talking to people done just for a little while we are now back onto machinery and onto our favourite type of machinery. Where are we at, George? We're now looking at a McHale kit. And to be honest, this is the first time I've ever seen a baler on a Lazy Susan. It's a bit of an experience, to say the least. I don't know what a Lazy Susan is, but... It's basically a thing that makes the... I guess that, I guess that bit. Our, our favourite show sheep should go on one of those for when people come. It might be a bit dizzy by the other day. Does this look familiar to you? No, actually, it looks they've, they've done a load of improvements. I thought this company should have done a long time ago. Please, yeah. we need them. They pull them on the front. Mikhail 998. George is checking out the lasers because we had a slight problem with those. One thing I will say with the lasers, when they did come out, sorry, when I called them up, they sorted the problem within minutes. Mikhail yeah. back up, spot on. Yeah. So guys, look who I've bumped into at Lama today. We have Holly and Dan, 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 not Dan, from the <laughs> in, It's In Your Root, In Our Roots podcast. Yes, and man. it's a really cool podcast. So guys, you want to tell us a bit about that and what you've been up to today? Well, the podcast is all yep. about talking to inspirational people with roots in the countryside. Yep. And agri sort of, normally have some sort of agri related aspect. And we talk to different guests each week. And then this episode's a bit different, isn't it? The Lammer episode. Yeah, so this episode we just wanted to kind of walk around, get a feel for Lammer, because actually it's, we're both Lammer virgins. We yeah. haven't been here before. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've just kind of been walking around, talking to people. It's been a load of nonsense, really, to be honest with you. Well, you're just like me, really. Like, I'm not too interested in machinery, I shouldn't say it here. <laughs> but it's a great excuse to come and see everyone. It is, honestly, walking around. And it's either people that you know, like yeah. people from Devon or whatever, yeah. or it's people like you, and it's just like, oh, we're friends for like yeah. podcasts youtubing you know it is mad how many people from like social media you see and bump into here like, i've had like what six seven eight people message me say so can we meet up it's so cool isn't it yeah it's nice like, it's just what i did with you <laughs> it can be really awkward though when you sort of look across and you see someone you think i know that person from somewhere yeah it might be from tiktok <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but i'm not too sure yeah, yeah, yeah i know exactly what you mean but yeah guys i hope you had a great day and um i might bump into you tomorrow too I hope you enjoy the hats. Yes. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, guys, yeah. Check out the podcast. Don't forget to start. And I'll see you in a bit. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. You'd see yourself coming with an orange tether and tractor, wouldn't you? Oh, we're going to have a look in. A serious tractor. So how does this all work? Change it a little bit since the last come in. You can set your own buttons too on your screen. It's literally, you can get one button to do one specific job. You've got your standard job. To say you want it to lift the machine up to 80%, you just press that on the bottom. Well, I'm guessing that's, they could do anything. I'm not 100% certain. It's a big, big difference. And you've got a charger in your tractor. So that's the most important part I for a I'll YouTuber. Be, honest, you can see why everyone says they're a one man machine, can't you? Right, oh guys, so that is Lama done for another year. We've met some incredible people. We've seen some very big machinery and it was an absolute honor to talk for the FCN and add in some fun. So guys, all I want to say is massive thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please tap that like button, subscribe to the channel, and once again, see you next time.